I'll be presenting the V model. Before I show you the entire image, let me give you a quick introduction. Okay. Process steps within the V model are bent upwards after the coding phase to form the typical V shape. Unlike moving in a linear way, such as the waterfall. Okay, we look at the first step of the V model now. The requirements specification. This is used to define the agreed specification of the organizational user. These detailed requirements form the basis of acceptance testing. During this stage, process structure and event models are developed so that the requirements are understood in detail. Flowcharts, entity relationship models, star chart diagram, etc. are used to model these requirements. We use these models for system testing as they will be easier to quality assure rather than ambiguous textual specifications. System design is concerned with the design of the computer system that will deliver the requirement defined in the functional specification. Let's move on to the next bit. Unit design is where individual programs or modules are specified. It's also a technical stage where system designs are determined and how they will be delivered. Right, let's go on to the next one. And the one responsibility at this stage translates specifications created in the previous stages into technical code symbols. So we have the complete diagram here. Coding forms at the point of the V with analysis and design on the left, testing and maintenance on the right. Let's have a look at the advantages. V model introduces testing early. So yeah, the V model introduces testing early by its relationship between each phase of the development life cycle and its associated phases of testing. This signifies the importance of verification and validation. Simple, clear, easy. Simple and easy to follow, the software development defines a logical relationship between phases, not to mention the process is balanced and relies on the verification from the previous step before proceeding forward. Let's have a look at the disadvantages. Doesn't account for change. Yep, the V model doesn't account for change, leading to the primary reason of fail. Therefore, it's not able to respond to change, making it inflexible. It's also very simple, may lead to false sense of security with managers and users, just in case something goes wrong. So, when would I use this model? It's suitable for large projects as so much testing is involved and where lots of testing is involved it takes time, resources and money therefore small projects will not suit this model also sticking on the testing route is the advantages of early fault finding with testing and for all this verification and validation show the V model would best suit for critical systems for example where human lives are involved as, as the substances are used where people are at risk. Let's have a look at some real life examples here. Medicine. So using systems requiring high reliability where hospital patient control applications are used. And let's have a look at the military. Also widely used on defence military, defence and military industries where requirements are well known. And that completes that completes the V model presentation.